friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have an Alvarez, and what I understand, and I don't know this from Adam, but you know that what I've been told is that this was a prototype Alvarez mandolin. It was not one necessarily for production. Now, you know, maybe that's true and maybe it's not. I have no idea. Um, anyway, it's... Uh, you know, a nice looking mandolin, but it has one very significant problem. And that is, I'm kind of, if you notice, I'm holding it by the metal and this neck. The neck doesn't seem to be too bad, but the rest of the body is sticky, literally sticky. I mean, you put your hand there for any length of time and it will stick and leave fingerprints. It's, I've never seen a finish quite like it. It's kind of like it was made, the finish was made out of um, shellac. Apparently the guy that bought this got a real steel deal on it and uh, like a hundred bucks or something and and got a decent buy on it It's a solid wood mandolin and everything um, So I mean just the metal parts alone would probably cost you a hundred bucks if you went and bought all that You know more than that more than likely So my charge is is to stabilize this finish I mean, you know, like if I were to have one of my mandolins professionally finished, I've already checked into it, and it was like $1,200 just to have the finish applied. Okay, so am I going to charge the customer $1,200 to professionally finish this? Well, no, I mean, they're not going to pay that, and they're on a very tight budget. You know, $100 to them seems like a lot of money. So, <laughs> so what I told them I would do is I would just strip it down. I mean, not strip it down, but I mean take all the metal parts, take all the parts off of it, get it down to just a bare instrument like that, and then just um, spray it lightly with sanding sealer, lacquer sanding sealer. And I'll spray it all over with lacquer sanding sealer, and I think that will seal up this, uh, whatever it is, shellac or whatever it is, and keep it from being sticky. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, that's my best shot, and that's the cheapest way I can think to fix the problem. So here we go. Got all the hardware stripped off of it, and now I'm just filling the body cavity with newspaper. Usually four or five strips of just... I use these little ad parts of the newspaper and just they're not much good for anything else and just strip them down and throw them in here and uh, usually about four of them a couple on each side will do it that just prevents a lot of overspray from getting inside the body and then you can take like a paintbrush like this handle and just move it around and make sure it's covered pretty good um, we're not like I said this is a very much of a low budget job so we're just going to do as quick and dirty a job as we can do here to make it uh, work for the customer and save him some money and yet yeah, but it's just so sticky literally I can't hardly touch it it just is sticky it, it's amazing how sticky it is um, the back of the peg heads real sticky the front of the peg head was not sticky at all so my you know my, here's my guess and it may be a prototype that may be true but my opinion is some amateur stripped off the factory finish and tried to refinish it themselves and didn't get it done and this stuff is sticky I mean it must be some really water-based shellac or something that just as soon as your hand uh, you know starts to moisten up on the finish it just sticks to it so as long as you keep moving you're okay if you, if you don't stop you can you can move around on the finish okay but anyway that's about the story I'm gonna put a little hook in this end right here and hold it by that and we're gonna spray it here in just a minute the good news on this Alvarez after spraying the first coat of uh, sanding sealer on it it doesn't feel real sticky anymore it, it may be just the tiny tiniest bit slightly tacky but uh, I think once we put one more coat on it, I think we're good. But before we can do that, we're going to have to sand it. I don't know if the hair is going to show. There it is a little bit. I think you can see the fuzz. It's just crazy. I mean, like, I couldn't even see that until I sprayed it. But that's what that was is fuzz stuck to the old finish from you know being sticky. And that it was coming out of the case. And it's on the back here. So I'm going to have to do a light sanding and uh, then just knock it down this is like I said this is a budget job we're not going for showroom quality we're just going for a decent finish that you can play the instrument with I'm gonna try dry sanding it with uh, this 600 sandpaper first and hopefully that's gonna be good enough 
And maybe we can just get rid of all these little fibers that are hanging on here. I don't know how you could have got those fibers off anyway. Uh, as sticky as that finish was, there was no way you could have sanded them off before. And so, you know, really spraying it with the lacquer, I think was the right approach anyway, even with all the fibers on it. Because now they, they're kind of brittle and they're coming off now. It does seem like they're coming off okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to 400. The 600 is loaded up way too fast. I'm going to go to this non-loading Lowe's 400 paper and see if it will work on this. Uh, you know, I'm not guaranteeing anything's going to work on this stuff because it's sticky and a mess. But it ought to be better than the other paper. This is 400. Just going to go over it lightly just to get rid of the fibers mainly. Yeah, that pretty much wipes right off of that sandpaper. I just wipe it on this carpet here and it kind of cleans the sandpaper off. That is some good sandpaper from Lowe's. If you haven't used it, you need to try it. Trust me, you'll thank me. Best sandpaper I've ever used. I, Hands down, I don't think there's any question. Got a little bit of orange peel going on on the back here. Not too bad, but a little bit. I don't normally get that with this sanding sealer, so I don't know what caused that. Probably just that weird finish. be sanding through the sanding sealer in a place or two I can feel the tackiness coming back a little bit but uh, I think we'll be fine I really do I think this is working it's just it just needs what it needs and it does need some sand in here to get rid of the fuzz look at the fuzz that came off of that So yeah, there's definitely fuzz there that was embedded. But I think we're doing the right thing now. I think we're headed in the right direction and I think it's gonna be fine. All right, I think we're gonna wipe it down now a little bit, give it our second coat and uh, maybe we'll put a third coat on it. Looking okay to me. This budget finish job with the sanding sealer uh, has definitely fixed it. It's not sticky at all now. Is it the best finish job I ever did? By a long stretch, no. But uh, there's a little bit of orange peel going on, and I would assume that that's from that cruddy junk that was under there. So I'm just going to very lightly sand it, very lightly sand it with about 1,200 and just to kind of level it out and then I'm going to buff it and that's as much as we're going to do to it because we are talking a budget job here. I've buffed out the mandolin as best I can. Uh, like I said, we're talking budget job and uh, you know, so I just kind of ran it through the buffer a few times and now I'm putting on this uh, Renaissance wax and I'm mostly doing that to try to harden up the finish a little bit more, crisp up the finish a little bit more Waxes, these paste waxes tend to make the finish just a little bit harder, a little bit uh, more durable, and uh, they, uh, they crisp up the sound. It actually does, generally speaking, help your sound, I think. And uh, it depends on the instrument. On some instruments, it makes a dramatic difference, especially on guitars. Anyway, we're going to do that. It's mostly because I think this will make the finish harder and even less sticky. So I just rub it on there pretty good and then basically just buff it right back off. And I'm just using these little paper shop towels. They seem to do fine. You could use other cloths and maybe do better, but these work fine for me. I, I get good results with it. That gives you a nice slick hard finish. 
Still got my newspaper on the inside from when I was spraying the uh, lacquer sealer. And uh, the way I get them out is I just take a screwdriver and just try to lift a corner out and pull them out of there in strips. Okay, we'll apply a little wax to the back side now. And then just buff it right back off. You don't want to let paste wax set and dry very long. It is hard to get off if it dries very long. And, then, and to that end, you don't want to do a too big of an area that you can't fix really fast. About the size of a back of a mandolin is about as big as an area as I would want to do with the paste waxes. So on your guitar, you may have to do it in sections. You might want to do it in three or four sections on the back. And you overlap the sections, of course, so that you don't see any line or anything. Yeah, that makes it really good, really hard, really slick. Does a nice job. You can feel a difference between the sides and the and the back. I'll go ahead and do the sides lightly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the sides. I'm going to turn your rag pretty often too to keep the dried wax off of the top. Once again, that was Renaissance wax. I get no kickback on that. I don't promote it but it seems to be a pretty easy wax to apply and to take off so it's good stuff and now we're going to set this one up and see how it plays You can see here the feet do not match up very well to the top. Over here you can see quite a bit of space on the end and it kind of even rocks on there. You can kind of rock, well you can see it rock in there I think. So anyway we're going to fix that. Now there's no more rocking, it fits there pretty good now. Just going to make it a little bit better yet. Looking under it, still see just a little bit of light in places, so we're going to work on it a little bit more. I believe that ought to be good enough. And uh, we're going to put strings on it and see what it sounds like. Well, we've got the sticky finished Alvarez unstuck. <laughs> it's you know it's not by any stretch a great finish uh, there's a little bit of orange peel that you can see in it if you look at it real close not too bad but a little bit and you know but anyway you know we got the sanding sealer put on there and it and it took away the stickiness now you can play the thing and now you can put it in a case without it sticking to the case it was really bad it's not sticking at all anymore so it, it should be fine and you know the finish is pretty darn new. It's only been sitting here drying for a couple of days. There's a chance that this bridge will stick to that finish even. So it's I'm kind of rushing it through, just trying to get it out of the shop here. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a budget job, but it turned out to be a pretty decent looking uh, job here. And I think it's got a fairly decent sound. I think it's going to sound a lot better, uh, you know, given time for the finish to dry. And that's going to take a month or two. So... But uh, here's what she, I, I also did a complete setup on it. I did a light fret job. I did a uh, intonation, you know, and I got the feet fitting better. And uh, just a lot of little things that needed to be done. She got rid of some of the sharp edges and stuff. The action's very, very low. Uh, feels real easy to play now. Got a nice punch. But I have a real good sound after that finish hardens up. Here's a little bit of sled ride.
something like that. It's the best I can do. Again, I got excuses. Two, fi two fingers are bandaged up. Got them caught in a 10-inch grinder. Whew. The grinder didn't hardly even slow down. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Hope you enjoyed it, friends. Be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Tell your friends. Thank you very much. Hello, friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Got something just a little different today. Don't believe we filmed this before. And that is, it's a banjo, five string banjo. Uh, it's one without the uh, resonator on it. I'm not sure what style that he, this fellow plays, but he's got problems with the fifth string spikes, if you know what that is. Uh, some people use a fifth string cable that slides up and down the fifth string. Other people use railroad spikes. Uh, and when I say railroad spikes, that's what they are, but they're little, for the little tiny miniature railroad spikes. And I've got a supply of those, and I keep them on hand for this, just such occasions. What I wanted to show you on this one, he's having trouble with these, and I don't know if he installed them himself or what, but you can see, even I think on camera, they're just by looking at the link, the string, they're not in line at all. They're kind of haphazard. And they're off of the string line by so much that you ha when you hook them in, you have to reach down pull them down below and then bring them back up and it bends the string so much that I believe it takes it out of tune quite a bit. So my goal is to try to straighten all that out and uh, make it where they'll work better and yet not be in the way of the string and not buzz and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm planning to do here is maybe I think I might just remove all the ones that are there and put them in fresh. <laughs> Though I haven't made up my mind yet, I may say one or two of them, I don't know. Start from scratch. That's what they look like. So I think I'm just going to pull them all first, fill the holes. Pretty much they're all bent or something. There's something wrong with just about every one of them it looks like. Always got to be one. It's got to give you trouble. And uh, let's see if I can get it a different way. I don't know. It's not coming. <laughs> Bummer. Okay, that sucks always has to be one that gives you trouble all right I'm just gonna file that one off flush as best I can do with this because it's it's not there's not enough there to grab and if I try to make enough there to grab I think I'm just going to create more problems yeah it's, it's already too far down. It broke off pretty close to the fretboard. So I'm filing it off flat. I'm gonna to try to take a little tiny punch and punch it down in a little deeper where it'll be below the level and I can fill it. There's always a way to skin a cat. It's not always the way you want to skin the cat, but I think I can do this. I hope I can. Yeah, it went right down, no problem. It's below surface, plenty far to fill it. Okay, no problem at all. I don't know why, since it knocked down in there so easy, why it didn't uh, come out when I needed it to, but it didn't. All right, I'm gonna take a single edge razor blade now and level this whole area right here where the, because it's kind of beat up. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is just take a little filler and fill each of those holes.
Okay, maybe you can see there that all the holes are filled. I, also, there's little dents around them where, you know, they made mistakes or something, and those are filled too. Now I'm just going to take the tiniest little brush I've got and just dab a little bit of dye right there in those spots. What I do when I only need a tiny bit is I just shake the can and just use it right off of the end of the lid there. I'm just going to try to just very carefully just dye this little area as possible because I know the dye won't match exactly but that'll be alright because we'll rub it out and get rid of most of it anyway. Not perfect job but it's not real noticeable either. We'll blend that a little later too I think. Okay, what I'm going to do is put the string back in here. And I'm going to try to use the string as my gauge for where to put the spikes. Now that I have a relatively straight line there, I'm going to just pick an arbitrary distance from the fret. You know, they had them really close to the fret, and that's not too bad. That's that's a kind of a good idea because um, it holds it tight on the fret. But if you get it too close, then it's really hard to get it in there because you can't get the string to bend down below the fret. So it, it's a you know you got to weigh the options here. I'm going to have it just to the right of the center of the fret, uh, of the narrowest fret, and but yet far enough away I believe that it'll make it much easier to put the uh, string under there and I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting it far enough away from the other holes so that we won't have problems with that so I'm maybe adjusting it for a couple of different purposes I think this will probably work right here because I'm missing all the holes now this one here is fairly close but I think I'll miss it enough I hope so now I'm just going to take and scribe a little scratch across there, across my pencil line. This way they'll all be consistent. Okay, now I'm do I'm going to off camera I'm going to find the right size drill for these little spikes. I'll get out the spikes, the new spikes and I'll test them in a scrap piece of wood to make sure that they're going to go in tight. I interrupt this video to show you this. Ta-da! And, whoops, dropping them on the floor. Not a very good way to show them. Tons of them. I'd like to say I found all these, but the truth is my wife found almost all of them, and I would say there's 17 or 20 here, and I think my daughter-in-law found one or two, but uh, anyway, whole sack of morels. Thank you, Cliff, for the t-shirt. It must be good luck, except that I didn't find any. My wife and daughter-in-law found them all. Well, I have measured the little spikes with my digital calipers and they measure anywhere from 30 to depends on which side which side you measure to 30 two thousandths or so now I'm just getting 30 on this one all the way around there's 32 well anyway the smallest bit that makes sense to me this one here measures about just under 30 right at 30 and I've tested it on this little piece of hardwood drilled a hole and then tried to put a spike in there and the spike seems to be tight so we're gonna go with this and see how it works I'm gonna drill all the holes first I'm gonna get down here at the light where I can see the my marks Well, I believe that does that. That's all the holes drilled. Now the tricky part is setting these things and getting them set well. And I'm going to try to come up with something that will be consistent and work real easy. Well, I put one in just off camera to test my process. 
seems to work okay so we're going to try it again. I've got these very tiny little uh, needle nose pliers, very small compared to a lot of them. Um, I've got a block under the neck here with leather on it. And I'm holding it, tapping it, getting started in the hole. I have the spike turned the right way. And basically, I'm just driving them down about flush with the top of the fret right now. I'm not too worried about the height at this point. I'll get back to the height in a minute. I might point out that these spikes are considerably smaller than the spikes that were in there. Um, I think that's a plus too. So these will be out of the way more because they're so much smaller. I will say they look a lot more consistent already. Now that we've got them in there and they're turned the right way, they're all in perfect line alignment. They look real good. They're in perfect alignment. Now we will uh, work on getting the height uh, adjusted here and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet though it might involve using the digital calipers here or the dial calipers right now that's at 56 thousandths and uh, let's put the fifth string back on it here and see not even hitting them right now so that's a good sign. Let me tune this up. Just as a like I said as a test it looks like that one's right around 50 thousandths. Let's just see where the rest of them are here. That's right at 50 thousandths as all, also. That's kind of crazy. 52 thousandths. It's pretty good uh, consistency right there, I'd say. 51 two thousandths. Uh, got a straggler here, 59 thousandths. 56 thousandths. And 49 thousandths. Okay, 40, uh, 50, 50 thousandths. All right, so 50 thousandths isn't too bad. It looks like the string will go under there pretty good. Um, it's not distorting the note much. It uh, seems the intonation's pretty good with using that. But I think I'm going to try to drive them down just a little bit more. I'm trying to decide on how to make it consistent, though, so that they're all at the same height. And I'm going to give that just a little bit of thought, but I think I've, I've got an idea here. I found this little piece of spring steel, and it's only 10 thousandths thick. So I bent it over and flattened it on the anvil with a hammer. And I've got it down to about 21 or 2 thousandths thick. It's about 21. And so I'm putting that under the, under the little prong of the uh, railroad spike. And now I'm going to find me a little punch that I can use to tap it down with. All right, I've got a real fine tip punch here. And I'm going to just see how this works. I haven't tried this before. I'm going to have to use a good technique here. Hold my finger on the metals to keep it from bouncing. And I have a feeling that might be a little bit too tight. And I think I bent, I bent the uh, head down because of the, my technique. I didn't have a good technique on this first one here. So I'm going to pry the head back up. I think that's all it's going to take right there. But now let's see if we can get the string under there. And I think we can. Uh, yeah, 
Actually, I don't think it's down good enough yet. Trial and error on camera. Why not? All right, so try that again. This time I'm going to be more careful and keep my punch behind the head here so that it doesn't bend it down on the front. That's what happened. It didn't drive in. It bent it down. There we go. That did it. Now, that did it. Now let's just see if that's enough to get the string under there. Yeah, it works. And yet it's below the height of the fret, so... Yeah, that works good. Yeah, that's good. We'll try, we'll try that again here, and we'll see if we can be successful on the next one. I think we got her. Let's try it. Try them out now and see how they're working. Okay, I don't have it tuned up. Let me go ahead and tune it up to pitch. No buzzing off of them as the, as it's played open, so it's good there. And now we'll try each one individually. Try this one first. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Getting a little buzz there, but not sure what that's off of. It's probably right off the top of that spike right there. That's the one. No, that's not the one I bent. Um, that one just might not be driven down as far as the rest of them. Let me just check it and see. Well, it seems to be, but we'll tap the back edge of it here a little bit to see if we can straighten that up a little bit. We're in pretty good shape there. What I'm going to do now, just for finishing touch, I'm going to take a very fine file and I'm just going to rough, uh, you know, just file off the head part here, not the overreach so much, but from this angle over, um, just to make sure that the string has a little bit more clearance. And I think it'll be just perfect if, after we do that. And I'm just going to file it at an angle from the edge of the fretboard up. That'll give a string more clearance on this side. That first one there is the most likely one to buzz because this string's the longest. I think it's fine. Second one, no, second one's buzzing off of the third one there. And the third one, I was looking at that, it does look high for some reason, and I don't know why. Did it pull back out? I don't know. Let me put the deal there and drive the back of it down some more. Well, I think we did it and did a nice job on that. They're all very consistent now. You can see there the consistency versus the way they used to look. And uh, they don't buzz and uh, they're, they're, uh, they don't seem to distort the uh, note very much. Which, you know, if you put them way off a of center um, and you pull the string way over there, then you're going to have to retune. So, 
you know, it's a trade-off. You got to get them close as you can get them to the string without letting them buzz. And, and I think we did a pretty good job here. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.